In 2019, while much of the world is taking decisive action on climate change, Australia is going backwards. The problem with renewables is that they are not... Carbon emissions have continued to rise since 2013. And emissions are up, as you say, the report's quite clear. But the emissions are actually far more So how does the Australian coal industry continue to get lucrative government decisions in its favour? I couldn't agree more with the sentiments that you've expressed. The coal lobby got hold of you. How do the coal giants, year after year, Prime Minister after Prime Minister, maintain their coercive grip over Australian politics? This is coal. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Tonight I'm joined by Michael West. He's a journalist and associate professor with the Sydney Democracy Network at Sydney University. What exactly have you been looking into? Well, it's really no surprising this week. So you identify the networks of influence for the coal sector. It's going to be big. I mean, this is the Australia's biggest export with iron ore, so there's a lot of money there to buy. Greenpeace's investigation unit worked with veteran journalist Michael West to expose the secretive network behind coal's dirty power. As our research suggests that Australians aren't aware of it at all. It's a network centred around the world's biggest coal companies, involving some of the wealthiest and most well-connected people in Australia who use established relationships within industry groups, lobbying and sections of the media to influence decisions at the highest level. There seems to be some inconsistencies. And this is, this is going to end up getting bigger, I think. Busy, very busy he is. Michael, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Patricia. Michael West is a journalist and associate professor. We need phone numbers and email addresses for everybody in Parliament House, basically, because we need to know who is in uh, the offices of all the key ministers. Uh, but at the moment, things are going well. Of course, we're finding significant connections. You know, Gina Reinhardt is one prime example. Mining billionaire Gina Reinhardt is a coalition donor whose staff have included former Liberal MP Sophie Mirabella and Adam Giles, former Liberal Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. Reinhardt maintains a close relationship with former Deputy PM Barnaby Joyce, whose campaigns she's also helped fund. And the, and the Treasury brought that into effect. We believe in coal-fired power, we really do. We believe in coal-fired As co-owner of major coal mining licences in the Galilee Basin, Reinhardt stands to receive significant benefits if the area is opened up via approval for the Adani Carmichael Mega Coal Mine, currently being pushed through by the coalition government. Adani recently received government approval for its controversial groundwater plan, despite advice from the CSIRO. Responsibility for approval fell to an ex-vice president at a mining company owned by Mitsubishi Development, co-owners of Hay Point Coal Terminal, and a portfolio of Queensland coal mines. Having quit the mining company in 2012, she became a Liberal MP the following year. That person is Environment Minister Melissa Price. Melissa Price's office told an energy company she would request a review of how coal-fired power stations can earn money from the government's emissions reduction fund after the company complained it wasn't allowed to bid into the scheme. Few ministers have been more vocal advocates for coal expansion than Federal Resources Minister Matthew Canavan. Canavan's own brother, John Canavan, a former executive at coal giant Peabody Energy, part owns Queensland's Rolston coal mine. Canavan has ministerial responsibility for the $5 billion Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility Fund, on which five of the seven board members have strong mining industry ties. 
The power of the pro-coal group inside the coalition, including the influential right-wing Monash Forum, cannot be underestimated. In 2018, they blocked Malcolm Turnbull's proposed climate law, the National Energy Guarantee, a move that subsequently brought down his prime ministership. Well, the other influences are, well, you have in-house lobbying in each large corporation. There are in-house government relations people. Then you have the peak bodies, such as the Minerals Council of Australia. Then you have the State Minerals Councils, the Queensland Resources Council, the New South Wales Minerals Council. Together, um, they're extremely powerful. The past 11 years have seen mining industry groups in Australia receive over $400 million in funding. And the largest and richest of them is the Minerals Council of Australia, which is run by some of the world's biggest coal giants. I call the roll. We'll be here all night. A coalition colleagues, if they're here in the room tonight, maybe if you could just stand. Of course, Melissa Christ, Environment Minister, thank you. And of course, this... In recent years, the MCA has run campaigns to dismantle a price on carbon and cut the renewable energy target. Isn't it amazing what this little black rock can do? And their $22 million advertising blitz against the minerals resource rent tax played a key role in the 2010 ousting of then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd. Well, the revolving doors issue is a significant one. Ian McFarlane was the Resources Minister who scrapped the mining tax. And I hope that the sector will acknowledge uh, and demonstrate their gratitude to him uh, in his years of retirement from this place. And demonstrate their gratitude to him uh, in his years of retirement from this place. Coalition ties to the MCA run deep. John Kunkel is a former deputy CEO of the MCA and a lobbyist for Rio Tinto. Within a week of becoming Prime Minister, Scott Morrison had appointed him as his Chief of Staff. While Angus Taylor, the current Energy Minister, consulted for the MCA before becoming an MP. In 2017, Malcolm Turnbull appointed Sid Maris, an MCA director and former bureau chief at The Australian, as his senior advisor on energy, climate change and resources. Maris returned to the MCA last year, following Morrison's ousting of Turnbull. We've also uncovered the pervasive influence of lobby groups. Around a billion dollars a year is spent and a good deal of that is spent by the coal industry. The point of these lobby firms is to be in the background, to snake around the halls of parliament, getting to know people, putting the case for the clients. The firm with the most power is Crosby Texter. Founded by Sir Linton Crosby, former Federal Director of the Liberal Party, and Mark Texter, Liberal's pollster and a key figure in Tony Abbott's rise to power, Crosby Texter ran Abbott's election campaign in 2013, as well as campaigns for John Key, David Cameron and Theresa May. Crosby Texter's corporate clients include coal giants Glencore and Mitsubishi, as well as the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association and the Queensland Resources Council. In 2017, Crosby Texter ran a campaign to undermine confidence in renewable energy on behalf of Glencore. It included spying on environmental groups and fabricating anti-renewable energy news stories. Yaron Finkelstein, former CEO of Crosby Texter, was recruited by Scott Morrison as his principal private secretary, one of his closest political advisers. While Andrew Hurst, a former Crosby Texter director, is now Liberal Party campaign director. LNP Senator James McGrath, former assistant minister to Malcolm Turnbull, was also a Crosby Texter political operative. McGrath threatened to call for Melissa Price's resignation unless she approved the Adani Carmichael coal mine before the 2019 federal election. Well, News Corp is, a, is Rupert Murdoch's media empire. I worked there for eight years as a columnist at the Australian newspaper. 
it's got worse since I was there. It, what it really is, it's a, it's a global machine. Murdoch Press is one of the most powerful forces, in some cases almost like another political party. All the Murdoch interests worldwide, be they Fox News or these UK newspapers, especially Australia, are all pro-fossil fuels and all of them question the science of climate change. The only reason anxiety is growing about climate change is nothing to do with the climate, nothing to do even with the weather. The reason anxiety is growing, Andrew, is because the ABC and others keep telling people that we should be anxious. In relation to any utterance about the global warming hopes. But we've also found connections behind the scenes. Matthew Fines Clinton, former editor at the Courier Mail, is now Scott Morrison's speechwriter, while Andrew Carswell, former chief of staff at the Daily Telegraph, is his press secretary. Clive Matheson, former editor of The Australian, was Malcolm Turnbull's top media advisor during his term as Prime Minister. Well, one link isn't significant. A number of links aren't that significant. But when you identify, as this investigation has done, a raft of links, and you look at the individuals that have worked for all these people going from the coal lobby to politics, back to the coal lobby, you can see that this network must have a powerful influence over government and the policies of government in this country. So here we are. This is, this is, I think, what it looks like. It's the, it's the whole picture that is defining any of these points okay. taken in. It works well in the graphic, though, doesn't yeah. it? This, this sort of constellation. Exactly. So, we've got Travis and Baker here. We've got his connection. You can see the power of this network play out. So and a case in point is Travis and Baker, the coal entrepreneur. He's also a former director of the Queensland Resources Council, that's the peak lobby group. So in 2015, some bakers Sunset Power bought the Vales Point Power Station from the New South Wales State Government for just $1 million. In 2017, Sunset Power revalued this power station to $730 million. A 730% uplift in two years. Freedom of information documents show that Travis and Baker lobbied the current Environment Minister, Melissa Price, about diverting money from the Emissions Reduction Fund to upgrade ageing coal-fired power stations like Vales Point. So another example is the fiasco over the Great Barrier Reef Foundation. Taxpayers' money diverted to a tiny, previously unheard of body to look after the Barrier Reef. In 2018, Josh Frydenberg and Malcolm Turnbull gave $444 million in public funds to the Great Barrier Reef Foundation without a competitive tender or application process. Chair of the foundation is John Schubert, an executive of ESSO, which is owned by oil giant Exxon. Other organisations with links to the Great Barrier Reef Foundation through its chairman's panel include Peabody and BHP, both members of the MCA. If these are just two examples that we've identified, what lies beneath? How many other decisions have been made in favour of the coal lobby? Unless enough people know about this and enough people care and get involved in the political process, the power of the coal lobby will continue. More coal will be burnt. Climate change, global warming. We're heading down that route because of the financial muscle and the influence through these networks of the coal industry. This investigation shows what the Australian people are up against. It should be a catalyst for action, to clean up our politics and end Australia's reliance on dirty coal power. 
Visit act.gp slash dirty power for more information and share this video.